Joining me now here on the MMA Report is a man we're going to see step back inside competition here, Bellator 290, a matchup that was supposed to take place all the way back there uh, in November of last year. Unfortunately, that matchup doesn't doesn't come together. And and I know I, was, I found a, a, an interview you did kind of recently where you talked about the fact of, you know, there, there was a little bit of a medical issue. You just couldn't get clear for that fight. Is that the correct uh, what happened there? Yeah, exactly. I just couldn't get cleared. And, it, uh, and it's really because the doctor – it was really a problem more with the doctor than the medical because I fought, I've, I've had six fights in Bellator since then I've had. So it was just, it was more with the doctor than anything. Uh, the doctor was just being very difficult, and, but thankfully we got a new doctor. So those, those things won't happen. That's gotta be a frustrating thing though. Right. Cause like, I mean, at, at the end of the day, you're you're grinding every day, and all you, all you want to do is go in there on fight night and, and go earn yeah. and earn that paycheck. I mean, it's fresh. It is do you describe those couple of weeks leave that fight as more of a, a frustrating thing? So I was I was I was very peed off about the doctor not clearing me because you know you had Christmas coming up, you had the holidays coming up, you had these things coming up, and I was like, well, now I'm not going to expect a fight check because I had plans. I had and, and but. It, it's okay. So this is how the story went. We were going to go to Paris, me and my fiance for Christmas, um, or for the, the, the month of December. And thankfully that fight didn't happen because we would have been in Paris when those riots and those things were going on. So, uh, there is some, you know, I don't know what, I don't know exactly what happened, but there were some riots. There's some like terror, you know, some attacks or whatever. So there's some bad things that happened in Paris. So thankfully we weren't out there because possibly we would have been stuck out there. Um, so I feel like at the end of the day, I, I believe in God and God. There's a reason why that fight didn't co- go through. It was it was frustrating, and yes, I was frustrated at the doctor. But I always know that God's plan is always going to be greater for us than we originally think. We 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 don't know God's plan. And it's always going to be great. I I feel the same way you do. I I have this thing is I feel like everything happens for a reason. There, there's a reason one thing leads leads to another. Uh, but I mean, by the time you step into the cage here in a couple of weeks, it's, it's going to be a little bit of time since you stepped into the cage there back in right. back in July. Uh, a close fight you had back there in July. What, what, what did you take away from that fight in, in preparations for this one? Uh, hard work beats talent. Uh, talent, talent is, I, I'm talented. I have a God gifted ability to understand the fight game and, 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 and grasp things very quick, quickly. It doesn't take me a very long time to understand, um, situations and move and, and, and um, moves and, and, um, positioning and things like that. It doesn't, that's, that's just God because some people, you know, it's going to take them a while, but just because I can't rely on that as well. I still have to work hard. I still have to be in the gym. I still have to be dedicated. And um, that last fight, I was starting to, you, you start to um, smell your own Kool-Aid or, or whatever the saying is. You start to believe in your own, your own grand delusion, really. And uh, it took me back because I'm, I'm, a, I'm a very hard critique on myself. And I said, I don't like this feeling because I almost felt like I lost. I could have lost. In my opinion, I could have lost. Even though some people say I had a unanimous decision for you winning, no people don't see how they they could a judge could have gave it to him one round or whatever. In my head, I was like, that was uh, that was a very crappy performance uh, on my part, and I don't want to do crappy performances. I don't want to have that mentality going into the cage. So, I took a lot of those issues those problems and doing what i was doing and changed it and from september from september on since we signed to fight um Jornel, i had just been dedicated man and it's going to show from here into the rest of my career now now do you have do you have that athlete mindset of like, like you, you get around NFL players and they talk about the 24 hour rule of, you know what? You take 24 hours, you kind of deal with what happened and you just, you move on, you, you move on to the next one. Or do you have a mindset of like, nah, man, that, that lives with me. Like it, it's hard for you to get that feeling out of your, out of your mind. Mm, maybe for the first, maybe for the first couple of days, Maybe for the first week, 
I'm, I'm feeling, you know, I'm sitting there and maybe wallowing in my own self pity or whatever. But after that, life goes on. And at the, at the end of the day, no one really cares. No one really cares about, oh, you had a bad performance. You know, you, you won, you get over it. And um, the only person that cares is you. The only person that can continue on that, that, that negative feeling is you. So, okay, first couple of days, I, I feel bad. Oh, I should have done this, should have done that. Man, I look terrible. I look like crap. He was really talking crap to me, and I couldn't finish him and all this. You know what? Okay, cool. Now you know what you need to do. You need to take it serious. You're a professional now. This isn't the amateurs. This is the big leagues. And you need to approach it as, as such and take it, take every man in there very serious. And so that's what that's, I feel like that's what, yeah, just that 24, I don't know if it's a 24 hour rule necessarily, but yeah, just move on, move on. I remember when this fight was initially announced, but my, my first thought was like, damn, this is a banger of two young studs coming up in this game that are two guys in a 35 pound division that, you know, th- these guys might fight two, three times by the time said done just because of both of your abilities. Like when Bellator initially comes to you with, with Jornel Lugo, like, do you remember like what your initial mindset was uh, about the matchup? No, I remember, well, I feel like also I called for this fight. I said, you know, I'm ready to fight. After the last fight, I called for it in my interviews. You know, I'm ready to fight. I, I said specifically Jornel, Caspell. Um, I don't know who else I said. I said, I, said, I, I know I said, it. I think I said, oh, Keith Lee. Keith Lee, but Keith Lee's no longer with Bellator or whatever. But I, I was, because I was looking to fight. If it, was, if it went exactly the way I planned, I was looking to fight the two opponents that Jornel fought, and Jornel would be the last opponent I fought. And Jornel couldn't put Cass away, but I would put Cass away. I would put Keith Lee away, and then I'd fight Jornel. But God had another plan and said, "Boom! Here you get you get you get the you get the the, the guy with the best record." And so now we're here, and uh, I'm excited because I remember seeing him after my first fight, kind of was eyeing me up who were looking at me um, in the airport after my first fight with Bellator. And I think maybe it was his first fight as well. And this was like two years ago. And he was just looking at me and you know, I didn't say anything to him or nothing like that. I just saw him and I was like, okay, you know, one day, at, what, at the end of the day, one day we're all going to have to fight. There's no ducking in this sport. And if you, if you do duck, I mean, you're a duck. So it is what it is, but yeah, they're all gonna have to fight me, and uh, I can't wait. So, Jornel is a great starting point, but I, I truly believe after I smash him, he'll be uh, we'll, we'll be coming back, we'll be coming back, and we'll we'll see a Lugo versus Bates too. And I'll have the belt by then. And I, I, I believe he'll work his way up, and if not, then you know it is what it is. But I believe we'll definitely see a Lugo versus Bates too after this. In terms of having an additional two plus months to prepare for this matchup, like it, do you look at that as an advantage, or, or do you kind of feel like, like, man, I'm tired of thinking about this dude every day for the last six months? No, actually, what I I was telling Antonio is I love people who keep me up at night. That is actually something I like about this fight game. I want you to keep me up at night because my mindset is just oriented differently on how I'm going to beat you, mm-hmm. how I'm going to smash you, how, I'm, how what, what can you do to beat me? What can I work on? What is my weakness? Like it's, it, I love the fact that, and that's, and that's how like actions, I want to fight people that keep me up at, oh, sorry. I want to fight people that keep me up at night because if you keep me up at night, it must be important. And then once I get past you, then I'm like, ah, I can relax, go enjoy time with my family go in and chill, go, go, go up to my parents' house in Oregon, uh, in Portland, uh, you know, and go and relax and do things like that and then get right back to it. Okay. Now this guy's going to keep me up. Who's next. Um, but during fight camps, I really don't during fight week. I don't get a lot of sleep. And during fight camps, I don't sleep a lot. I sleep five, four hours here, two hours here, mm-hmm. three hours. It's very sporadic, I, but, but, but it's on a schedule, but it's very sporadic. And I like that. 
it, is it hard for you to kind of turn off that? Like, you know, you, you, we all, we, you know, we all have a job, whatever it may be. And, and we all like to kind of get home and be able to turn off kind of like what work day was. Do you have that ability to turn it off of like when you're just sitting at home and like maybe you're just trying to watch TV or you're trying to play video games or read a book? Like, can you get your mind off the fight? When I'm so when I I wake up at four in the morning, uh, four, four, four in the morning, four thirty, go to the gym from five to seven, come home, relax, play video games, go to the gym from nine to about twelve thirty one. And when I do that, that's when I go to sleep. I'll go to sleep about four or five hours, wake up about six, meal prep my dinner. Oh, and then and also in the in the middle of that that seven, after that first workout session, I eat. That's my breakfast. Then I'll, you know, do my workouts. So I'll wake up at six, I'll meal prep my dinner, and then uh from seven thirty to nine, seven thirty to eight thirty I'm in the gym again, sometimes nine. And then I'm back home, I eat, and then I go to sleep for a couple hours and I wake up. Sometimes I wake up at three, sometimes I wake up at two, and then I, I just stay in my word. And yeah, I yeah, I like I, I just like that, that 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 when I'm home, I can relax mm-hmm. and I can chill. And then I go right, but then I'm always thinking like I can't wait to go to the gym. <laughs> yeah. Because, you know, one of the things that I was noticing about you is, you know, I'm, I'm kind of doing, you know, digging into you. I'm like, hold on. You know, there really hasn't been any posts on Instagram in a long time. I, I don't see it. Uh, are you really, you're not active on Twitter. You're not, I, I, you're not, I don't yeah, find TikTok for you. Are you, are you just not a social media guy? I really wish that that didn't affect our, our paychecks, I guess. Yeah, yeah. I really wish it didn't. Uh, unfortunately, it, unfortunately, I feel like it does because I feel like we should be based off the our records, the 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 people we put actually in the seats, our uh, our our even a projection like our projection like okay they're projected to do this and if they meet that then they should okay but um, yeah I'm not a big social media guy I don't like to post on social media I also think it's I'm not oriented to social media yet. I don't know. I'm not. Uh, I, I don't even know. I don't even know what to say. I'm not really a social media guy. I, I, I like social media. I, I understand it, but um, I don't like posting what I do and yeah. where I'm at. The, but, but I also understand that that's something we have to do, especially with this day and age, you have to move with the times or you're going to get left. Yeah. So it's something we're working on and marketing yourself. And it's something that I'm actually learning, um, taking a couple courses for, because especially with this coming year, it's, it's something you just have to do as a fighter. You have to make your own videos or find a videographer and make videos and do things like that. So I'm, I'm working on it. It's something I'm, I'm getting better at. Uh, I, I'm one of those people that if I don't know it, I'll find someone who does or I'll work on it and, and get it and, and figure it out. Because uh, at the end of the day, it's, I mean, someone's done it somewhere. So you just have to learn it and be disciplined enough to learn it. So I'm working on it. But yeah, it's social media, man. Oh, I know. I know. I mean, look, I, I went to college for marketing and uh, when I was in college, social media was not a thing. So I had to, I had to learn about it as well. But uh, Joe, oh, man, I, I appreciate time. I look forward to seeing this matchup here on February 4th and uh, good luck in the fight matchup, man. Thank you so much, man. God bless.